All right, guys. Here I am. I'm in the kitchen. I am already started without you, I think, because I tried to put my video on pause and I pushed the wrong button when I came back. So let's start this story all over again. My base paint is wooden. I hate it. I took a picture of a can that a couple people have said they use and it works wonderfully. I went to Home Depot. Um, it doesn't work wonderful for me and it's not even the same base paint, but my Home Depot doesn't carry that particular can that I took the picture of. So I bought similar, just a basic white interior latex paint. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. My paints break up, my colors break up. Um, so yeah, not a happy camper. That was story number one. Oh, story number two. When I was in Glidden, there is a quite a nice clerk at the till that asked me if I checked the clearance rack for paint. And I said, well, no. I didn't even know there was a clearance rack. And she said, oh, yes. It's around the corner to the left and down. You just can't miss it. So I went down there. And again, not even knowing that Home Hardware, Home Depot had a clearance rack. And they had tons and tons of paint. Um, most of it was enamels, which I don't use a lot of, uh, but they're super cheap. So if you're in your Home Depot, go and check because quarts get marked down to $3 a quart and sample pots get marked down to 50 cents. So you can't, you know what, you can't beat it. So that was that. My next story was fiberboard. I'm painting on fiberboard. I'm just going to swipe and talk to you guys. Um, I'm painting on fiberboard. I get these from my mom who gets them from a local merchant in her little town and whatever this lady sells it comes in packing crates and these fiber boards get used as dividers to divide the products and so once she unpacks her packing crates divides the products they get discarded and so my mom goes and collects them all for me they're quite thin um, and so I have learned the hard way that I need to lay them flat when I'm ready to let them dry. But as long as I lay them flat, they're perfectly fine. And yeah, they're great. And then my mom, God bless my mom, makes frames for me for them, which I can show you. I've, I've actually showed you before, but I can show you again. These little frames and she uses some sort of a machine. She cuts a strip on either side of it so that I can slide these panels right in and it keeps them from warping. Yeah, they're very, very cool. So those were the two stories that I shared when I didn't put the video back on. So the only other thing I talked about was my base, not my base paint, my cell mix is a bit different too. Because as we all know, the Aussie float trial is a game changer, but it's also expensive. So I mixed it 50-50 with the US float trial, and I added a little bit of the Minwax wood conditioner. Just to kind of stretch it out a little bit. I don't know why I'm making all these intricate little curls because as soon as I spin it, they're going to be gone. But it's fun to play. It's fun to talk. So those were my three stories. Oh, story number four. I, ha I had, it was just like a talk-a-thon the last picture, you guys. Um, I bought myself a chainsaw. So I've gone from artist to bush bunny in like as simple as a change of shoes and a different hair tie. It's like, I bought myself the chainsaw. I heat my house with wood and I have some real issues getting wood not delivered. I have no problem getting it delivered, but you know, men can't measure. Like they just can't measure. And so I order wood and I always, I'm very specific. I'm very straightforward. I need my my wood to be cut no larger than 15 inch lengths, absolutely no bigger. I make sure everybody's aware of that. Can you do that? You understand I have a very small wood stove, 15 inches. Oh yes, not a problem. So this guy delivers wood to me a couple months ago 
and it's beautiful it's beautiful wood it's clean and yeah it, the quality of wood is amazing but i have pieces that range from 16 to 22 inches long so i called him after i got my wood put away and thanked him for the amazing clean wood and said you know you clearly measure like a man because i have at least a quarter of a cord that's like 16 to 22 inches like i can't can't do anything with that I don't have anybody here doing these blue jobs and I don't really feel I should have to um, your advertisement says custom cut orders so he said oh he didn't realize and I thought well how can you not realize like come on we all know what you know a foot looks like I was gonna say six inches but then I thought that would be dirty so he said to me that uh, he would, if I wanted to order another cord, that I could just throw the pieces up to the side that were too long and he would come back and cut them all at the same time in my yard. And I think, well, do you think I just fell off a turnip truck? Like, why would I do that? Like, you can't measure and make good on the first load. Why am I going to do this for the second time? So I said, well, hell no. Thank you for your very kind offer. Um, just come and cut what's on the ground. So he said, quote, I am a man of my word and I will come and make it good. Yeah, okay. So in order to be a man of your word, you have to keep your word. And I haven't heard from him since. So I bought a chainsaw. To hell with you. And I had my first chainsaw lesson yesterday. And my quarter of a quarter of wood that was all too long is all cut, split, and put away in my woodshed. Yeah, it's super exciting. Super, super fun. I'd rather have bought something other than a chainsaw for my money, but it's definitely a handy practical tool for me to have. Because it comes in many, many times I wish I had a chainsaw so now after all my complaining about the base paint for whatever reason it's not looking too bad this morning the piece is looking a little crazy all right I need to dump a bunch of paint off so I'm just going to wiggle things this way and just kind of walk it down. Back to center. Okay, let's sit and stare at this for a second here. I think, I think, I think I'm going to just keep coming this way. See if I can get a little bit of paint down off this corner because I have a lot of paint on the board and rather than put more on, Let's just try to stretch that off a little bit. Huh. 1960s calling me home, you guys. So I think. I'm just going to add a little bit of white to this corner, these corners. Hang tough, my friends.
this poor little board has been poured over like three times now. And said it's just, it's fiber board, so it doesn't really take a, a lot of feeding and it starts getting into, turning into sawdust, literally. But it's still okay for now. So, how can we, what can we do to just change this a tiny bit? I'm the, these little spins are just to sort of flatten the paint out. They're not really for any big purpose. <laughs> any big purpose. That don't make a lot of sense today, you guys. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? We might just leave this right like this. It's a little bit chaotic, a little bit fun. A little spin, just a little one. Hmm, not sure. would be a great piece to modify with lots and lots of contrasting lines but I'm not sure that I want to do that Taking out this little, little strand of colored paint right there. Well, you know what, you guys, I might just leave this alone and just walk away from it at this point. I can clean up any little details later on with just a little touch up if I want to. Okay, guys, I'm quitting. That was pretty fun, actually. Um, I'm going to bring you down <laughs> and show you my madness. And then I'm going to lay this flat or it will be warped and weird for sure. Warped and weird. I still, I still think I'd like to do something in here, but I don't know what to do. Oh, what to do, what to do. You know what? Let's modify it. 
Let's do it. Let's do it. I get a modifying stick. Um, should I, should I, should I, or not? Okay, let's not, let's not go modified crazy. Let's just, let's just add some details. This kind of looks like some sort of sort of a florally type top. So let's go with that. I don't know guys, part of me just wants to go crazy. There's just so much to play with. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, you guys. Let's do it. Let's go nuts. Let's hope this video doesn't time out because I will be annoyed. All right, let's go for it. Let's do it. Let's do it right up. Here we go. In a clean cloth. Little lines, both directions. The cleaner the lines now, the cleaner the outcome when it dries. So take your time. Leave paint on the stick, take paint off. Leaving paint on the stick leaves you these little kind of automatic stamens on your on your flower. Here, I'll show you, we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it somewhere else. Let's do it. I don't really wanna do it here. I'm, the green has a lot of mica pigments in it, so it's not gonna hold its shape well for modifying. So we're just going to leave that alone and find a line that is more just straight paint. So this one, I think, oh goodness, there goes my hair in the top. That one's not going to work well either. Okay, that one might be all right. I wasn't sure what that was. So, um, leave the paint on and come back in. Paint on, come back in. Paint on, come back in. Just as simple as that, my friends. So a few people have asked me anytime I do this, whether I 
put my skewer right to the tile or the board or whatever and sometimes sometimes i do and sometimes i don't and they're really good questions because it forces me to think about it the next time i do it because i just kind of do it and i don't really know sometimes is the answer and when i'm doing it now then i'm concentrating on like what, what do i do with it but yeah i sometimes i do bring it i do bring it all the way to the bottom sometimes i don't So these are nice examples of contrasting lines. You have your light green and then your pink. So you're going to have a really prominent pattern here. Okay, I could keep going, but I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to time out. So if you wanted to add some little dots to your piece, you absolutely can. And I use exactly the same paint that I, I poured with. So here's just a quick example, and then I'm going to shut this off. So a little bit of blue. So if you wanted to, you could easily just go down all these little petals and just add little dots of color. Again, contrasting, you know, or different shade is creates more visual interest when you look at it. Um, this is cool. I like this section here. Let's do a couple little blue dots on this and then I for sure am going to shut this down. So there we go. Those are obviously, those are dots on the paint. You can add dots on the white. Like you can just keep going. You really can. It's kind of like, like there's no limit to what you can do. You just have to be brave and do it. I screwed that up. I got a dot out of line. All right, my friends, enough, 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 enough. I'm going to go back and put this down nice and flat because I can see where the board is already starting to work. I'm going to thank everybody for hanging with me in the kitchen today. You guys are awesome. It's bright and early. Um, I hope everybody had a coffee while they were listening to me babble. I'm full of stories today. Full of stories. All right, my friends, pour happy and stay safe and keep well and create and like share and subscribe and join me again in the kitchen you guys are awesome thank you so much for all your support and kindness and love you guys are amazing all right guys here we go so there it is this is the whole exciting piece this is a long video for me 23 minutes long it's a very long video there we go. So let's kind of creep in slowly and then you'll be able to see all these intricate little details. So there's our little dots. There's my blue dot out of alignment. That's no good. That will have to, that will require a surgical repair. Absolutely it will. And yeah, look at this contrasting colors. All right, my friends. Thank you again. Bye for now, guys.